I don't contribute to open source because... Well, you know, that's not something I would say, but in this video, I explore the most common things I hear to this sentence and why I think they are myths. I hope this will help you either make the decision to contribute to open source, or if you're having doubts as to whether you should continue, it reminds you why you started contributing to open source in the first place. But first, I want to remind you that you can come and geek out with me in the Eddie Hub community, and no matter your level of expertise or your role in tech, I would love if you would consider contributing to one of my open source projects and geeking out with me. I'm there every day. Myth number one, you're working for free. No, I don't mean that if you get a job in open open source, you don't earn a salary. More on that later. What I mean is that there is the misconception that you are giving up your time and knowledge and expertise when you contribute to open source, yet you get nothing in return. I cannot think of one instance where that has been my experience. By contributing to open source, you are getting technical experience, developing your people skills by communicating with contributors from all around the world, broadening your perspectives on how to collaborate and also how to approach and solve problems just by the virtue of the fact that the team you work with has just grown. And you're also going to be growing your network. Myth number two, you need to be a great coder. Many people say to me, oh, I'll contribute when I reach a certain level, or once I have senior in my title, then I'll feel I can contribute to open source. I know this could be imposter syndrome, which is a very personal thing. What I don't want people to think is that they need to reach a high level of technical expertise to be able to make their first open source contribution. I want to bust the myth that open source Project maintainers don't want contributors who are starting out in tech. I can personally speak about all our Eddie Hub maintainers and how they want to make sure that the project is inclusive, does not discourage anyone from contributing, and in fact, we go the extra mile in making sure we lower the barrier to entry. Why else would maintainers spend so much time helping and guiding and discussing with our new contributors on how they can make the best out of their experience? An example of this attitude is that we have a specific label for those issues which are good for contributors starting out. You guessed it, it is the label called Good First Issue. We've even gone a step further, add points to those, but I have a dedicated video on that. I know it can be super daunting when you first look at a project and you're not sure where you should contribute. We want to make this as easy as possible and simple as possible and straightforward as possible for you. And we're improving this all the time with your help. Myth three, you need to code. That's it, period. If you don't code, you can't contribute to open source. I'm wondering if this is the biggest myth of all. Now, I know I have tweeted about this myth before. Surprisingly, I got quite a wave of abuse on Twitter saying that my comments were encouraging and I quote, low skilled and unprofessional people making contributions and basically messing up the project. No one can mess up the project. And if they can, you set your project up incorrectly. And the value that new people to your project and to tech can bring is amazing. I'll let you decide whether those comments were posted just to get some vanity metrics or maybe try to make themselves look better. I'm not going to get into that right now. What I do want to say is that I have come across and collaborated with people who are making great open source contributions without writing a single line of code. A project needs technical writers and can reach a larger number of contributors coders or not, if the docs are translated in other languages, for example. Myth four, the contributions must be big and groundbreaking. Now, this is a sure way to put unnecessary pressure on yourself and the maintainers, plus deter you from contributing to open source. I'm not sure why some people think that an open source contribution needs to completely transform the project. That's a way not to get your pull request merged. Maybe it's the public nature of open source. They feel the whole community is watching. Let's throw this myth away. Let's replace it with this statement. Open source contributions need to add value. Adding value for me is essential, no matter the size size of the contribution. Don't mistake a small contribution with doing something just for the sake of chasing a green square. That is something I definitely don't support. You might find that there are contributions to be made to already existing docs, but you think, why has no one made this? Is it because the maintainers don't think it's important? Okay, I don't think I'll contribute then. Please change your mindset and start contributing. The likelihood is that the documentation improvement hasn't been made because no one noticed it. Myth five, open source doesn't pay. If you've watched other videos on my channel, you know I do love creating content on how you can create a sustainable career from open source. If you're new to this channel, then I've linked some of those videos below and hopefully you'll find them helpful, especially if you still think this myth is true. There's GitHub sponsors, 
open source funds, bug hunts, and you can take your project into a SaaS product are just some of the ways you can generate income from open source. If freelance and entrepreneurship isn't the route you want to take, then take a look at all the companies that are open source and also hiring. Just a little tip, where do you think those companies look first to hire their next employee? They are looking at open source contributions. Now, I'm not here to change your mind. I just want you to give this topic some thought. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Plus, let me know your experience or other myths you've heard in the comments below. And if you like open source content, from tutorials to tips, and how you can make a sustainable career from open source, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the Eddie Hub Discord. We geek out there every day.